guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel Archituber. I am Architect Web V and I make content related to architecture and interiors. If you are new here, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel below. Okay, so until now we have discussed about prehistoric period to Greek architecture. You might have read by the title that today we are going to be discussing about Roman architecture, Roman civilization. So let's learn about Roman civilization for today's video. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, then please do give them a watch. And now, having said all of that, let us start with the video. So in this video, we are going to be discussing about the evolution of Roman civilization and architecture, its origins and the evolution of Roman architecture through its different stages. And then we are going to be discussing about the Roman architectural elements such as columns, arches and domes. Then we will be discussing about the famous examples of Roman architecture and town planning as well. So let us deep dive into the PPT. So discussing about this map, we have different time zones and eras and the evolutions of Roman architecture and civilization which was founded by Caesar Augustus best known as Octavian who lasted from 27 BC to 14 AD till his death and he conquered so many places okay so as you can see in the yellow dark green light green pink we have all of the places marked so you can go through that so now starting with the introduction ancient roman style is amalgamation of greek and etruscan architecture together they are considered to be a body of classical architecture although the romans have borrowed so much of architectural style from the greek period that we will be discussing in this ppt itself like the ionic style korean style and doric style okay then they have used their knowledge to improve the arch vault even the dome in the architectural community these accomplishments were last steps that added to the understanding of architecture today by reaching these facts the roman were able to create many impressive buildings and structures so now let us start with the basic planning of the roman empire as you can see in the map a which is showcasing the palatine okay which means high level office which is attached to the royal courts okay and this term was first used in the ancient room for the chamber lanes of the emperor then b the republican wall c aurelian wall d the Colosseum. e the pantheon f bath of diocasians then g baths of caracaya then h Muslim of Hadrian, then J. St. Peter's Bill. We are now discussing about the timeline of Roman civilization. So, early Rome happened in 753 to 386 BC, and the foundation of the city was done in this early period. The Etruscan rule was there, and in this period, Etruscan temples and tombs and Cloaca Maxima was the major accomplishment. Then, discussing about the Republic in Rome which was in 386 to 44 BC, Roman conquest of Northern Italy, Roman conquest of Greece, Julius Caesar, and in this period, construction of Appian Adequate happened with Vitruvius's De Architectura. Then 44 BC to AD 50, early empire of Roman happened, in which Egypt declared a Roman province, emperor given supreme power, and the major accomplishment of the early empire was era passes then high empire happened in 50 to 250 AD which destroyed uh, most of the Rome from the fire volcano destroyed then uh, in this period the major accomplishments were like Colosseum, Pantheon, Forums okay, and Baths of Caracalla then in 250 to 550 AD late empire and the decline of the Rome happened founding of Constantinople last reign of the Roman Emperor in the West. Then in this era, they founded parts of Diocians, Villa at Paisa, then Basilicas of Maxentius. Okay, so now discussing about the Roman social structure, it comprises of six categories like patricians, plebeians, slaves, freedmen, equestrians and women. Okay, so patricians comprises of aristocratic class comprising of wealthy land owners and noble families. Then discussing about the plebeians, the common people including farmers, laborers, merchants. Okay, then slaves 
a class of individuals without legal rights than freedmen, former slaves who were manumitted and had certain rights, then equites, a wealthy class of citizens primarily involved in trade, commerce and second in status only to the patricians, then women, women's roles varied significantly across social classes, okay, while they had limited legal rights. Now discussing about the elements of Roman architecture, which shows the significance of Greek influence. However, the Roman functional needs sometimes differed, resulting in interesting innovations. Nevertheless, attached to the ideal forms and extended Greek ideas to make them more functional. Romans needed interior spaces for worship, whereas the Greeks worshipped outside. Their solution was to extend the walls outward, creating engaged columns while maintaining the same basic shapes. Now let us discuss about the Roman town planning. So the cities were the center of Roman life, water and sewer systems, transport and defense, public spaces and markets, paved linking roads were needed for infrastructures. The plan of the city was based on the camp. It had two main axes like Carus EW and Decumanus North South, where the two converged was the forum. The rest of the space was divided into squares in which insulated or the blocks or the flats were built. The most important part of the city was the forum where political, economic, administrative, social and religious activity were centered. Main buildings were in the forum. In big cities, there were theatres, circuses, stadiums and ordens. Forums were the cultural centers in the cities. They were often placed at the crossroads of the important urban ways, Cardo Maximus or Decumanus. A great political square was one of the center of the group of buildings around it. So as you can see the major elements of Roman town planning and architecture, paved roads were needed to reach any point of the empire. The roads were made with strong foundation. Then bridges were one of the important architectural element as it was needed to connect to the riverbank points. They were characterized by no pointed arch, construction of ashlar masonry, route more than 5 meter wide. Then Talking about the aqueducts, they were built in to avoid geographic irregularities between fountains, rivers and towns. They were used to bring water to cities. In these ports, every necessity for the execution of the usual works in a port assembly should found like gateways with stores, roads for taking sheep to early ground, drinkable water fountains and machinery for landing and then downloading the merchandise. Defense of the cities has been one of the capital problems that civilization had to solve in order to project the future of their citizens, goods, culture and ways of life. Romans were the first in the technique of improving different kind of defense using walls. Now discussing about the architectural materials used in Roman architecture. Okay, so now discussing about the materials, first we have a stone. The Romans used a variety of stones for building including turf, pepperino, albany stone and travertine. So travertine was the most important stone for building during the empire and was used to build exterior of the Colosseum. Marble was used for decorative purposes such as in slabs set in cement on brick and concrete walls or as mosaics in pavements. Then concrete, a mix of rock, sand, water and ash concrete allowed the Romans to build large ceilings and domes of roofs. Roman concrete was made by mixing heated powdered lime with aggregates, then adding water. This process created a controlled explosion that raised the heat in the mix, changing its chemical composition. Bricks The Roman bricks was easy to use and was used to make walls. Wood The Romans used unworked wood and round wood in their construction. Clay was used in Roman construction. Now let us discuss about the different typologies of Roman architecture. Roman architecture has a rich typologies which include religious building, temples, civic buildings, public buildings, spectacles, commemorative, domestic, funerary and engineering works building. Discussing about the religious buildings which has temples, it copied the Greek model. It has only one portico and the main facade. The cella is totally closed built on a podium instead of having stairs all around it only has them in the main facade there were other kind of temples like circular similar to the greek thelos pantheon 
and combined squared and circular structure was in the honor of all gods then civic buildings like basilica it was the residence of the tribunal it is rectangular and has different naves the central nave is higher and receives the light from the sides the building ends in an apse it covered the walls barrel over the central nave and aged over the lateral naves then discussing about the civic path they were spaces for the public life they consisted of different rooms changing rooms with different temperature rooms swimming pool gymnasium and library then spectacles theaters it is similar to the greek but it is not located in a mountain but it is completely built it has a semi circular scenery the doors to facilitate people's movement are called vomitoria it does not have the orchestra then discussing about the amphitheater it comes from the fusion of the two theaters it was the place for spectacles with animals and fights there could be filled with water and naval battles then circus it was the building for the horse races and then commemorative monuments they were usually placed at the main entrance of the cities in order to remember travelers and inhabitants the greatness and the strength of the roman world at the beginning they were wooden arches where the trophies and richness from the wars were shown but then this habitude changed the romans built the commemorative arches with inscriptions they were a roman creation and they succeeded many of them have been constructed until the present days arches were used not only to commemorating roman victories or military generals they also marked limits between the provincial borders now let us discuss about the architectural elements of roman architecture first we have columns the essential element of roman architecture serving both functional and aesthetic purpose they were used to support buildings create spaces and add visual interest to the structure different types of columns roman architects used different types of columns such as doric ionic and corinthian to create different effects doric columns were simple and sturdy ionic columns were more ornate and corinthian columns were the most decorative and elaborate The Colosseum is a famous example of Roman architecture that features columns. The structure has over 80 arched entrances and is supported by a series of columns that runs around the perimeter of the building. Now discussing about the arch, it was one of the revolutionary architectural form that allowed Roman architects to span wider spaces than ever before. The triumphal arch was the popular form of an arch in imperial Rome and many examples still stand today. Then discussing about the domes domes were an essential element of roman architecture that allowed architects to create larger and more complex structures such as temples palaces and public buildings the pantheon is a famous example of roman dome architecture which still stands today as an testament to the technical innovation of roman engineering now discussing about the roman classical orders like corinthian ionic and doric So discussing about the Roman Doric style or in column it is taken from the theater of Marcellus at Rome the order has base unlike the Greek order 1 by 2d the column shaft is circular and tapers to 3 foot to 2 thirds to the top and it is divided into 16 to 20 flutes okay now discussing about the Roman Ionic period which was taken from the temple of Fortuna Virilis okay the base is 1 by 2 high with 20 flutes the shaft diminishes to 5 by 6 that the top and inner column is 3d volute capital now discussing about the roman corinthian taken from the temple of castor and pollux at rome column base is 1 by 2d high 24 flutes separated by fillets Okay the cornice has the dentils which is supported by series of beams like brackets called medallions it was favorite order of the romans and were largely used then we have the roman composite it was used in triumphal arches it has an acting base upper and lower torus molding separated by scotica and fillets which has 24 flutes separated by fillets the capital is combination of walls of ionic and acanthus leaves of corinthian then roman tuscan which was invented by etruscans named after tuscany taken from the famous colonnade which reaches to the saint peter 
okay then discussing about the roman architectural marvel which is colosseum the colosseum was built as a very large outdoor theater called an amphitheater the amphitheater is a round or oval building with towers of seating rising in curved rows around an open spaces audiences went to an amphitheater to see different types of games in the 1st century ce the roman empire was expanding around the mediterranean area and into northwestern Europe its population was about 50 to 60 million uh, or approximately 1/5 of the world's population about 33000 metric tons of soil were removed from large area to make deep hole for the colosseum the outer walls were filled with the statues of famous romans the gladiators and animals were laid out from the cages under the arena the wooden floor was covered with sand women and slaves watched from the very top the velarium or awning was attached to the ropes that were connected to more than 200 wooden beams at the top people used 80 arches on the first floor enter and exit the arena the colosseum could hold 50000 spectators many more than any other amphitheater at the time The floor was made of wooden planks covered with loose sand brought to the room from Egypt. The Colosseum had four main floors with 80 arches on each of the three floors. These arches supported the weight of the stones above them and on the first floor were used as the entrances and exits. It was made of canvas and held in the place of ropes attached to the wooden beams at the top of the arena. Velarium provided much needed shade for the spectators. Without it, they would have spent entire days baking under the sun. And yes, with that we have completed Roman architecture. Please do let me know what more you would like to see here on this channel. I'll see you in my next video. You know the drill. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel below. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, please take care and bye.